Hello everybody and welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West where today I did just notice that there's a uh, there's a bandit camp right here in the middle of everything that I have somehow missed. Um, but we're not going to keep doing that I spent the last several hours <laughs> stalling. Also, I do feel a little better. Game progression, I'm only at 36.82%, so that makes me feel better. We're like uh, a little over a third of the way through, which I was kind of thinking we were like a half. Although, to be fair, when I turn in the, the quest, it might jump up a lot. In which case, I'll be like, ah, but... <laughs> Man, some of those side quests, though, am I right? Like, wow. I just had to come off, come off of that. I'm like, still, you guys got like a day or so at least, and I'm like, ugh. I'm emotionally... <laughs> compromised, but it's good. It's fine. Gave myself a minute. With a good balance of range, fire rate, maneuverability, yeah, I should do more points into bows. I also need to try to make more of an effort now to make ammo at workbenches. I'll have to see if uh, the traps are. I think I think they're still going to make traps expensive because they hate me personally, but <laughs> I can't believe terror arrows are so expensive. That was my strat. I know I've complained a billion times. It was my strat. It was my strat in the old game. I just terror arrowed the crap out of everything. All you needed was wood and some echo pod stuff. Now it's like 13 machine muscle and the soul of your firstborn child. I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. Am I barefoot? Kind of. Okay, I was like, that looks very uncomfortable, but I have something underneath my feet. We have a lot to do in here, I think. We have some drones to turn in. We got, we got stuff to do and probably main quests. Uh... Yeah, that's the stuff. Okay, everything's fine. Why does the floor look so dirty? Why is it? It must. Oh, it must always be like this. I'm like, what have you guys been doing? I think we do have more plants, though. We do. Oh my gosh, she's getting stuff to grow. Look at she got seeds. Oh my goodness. Let's see how everyone's doing. <laughs> He's just. And she's back. Uh, let's play Strike. Actually, legit, I do want to play Strike. I just don't, I just don't know how, so, and I feel bad. I'm sorry, dude. I need to get going. Yeah, I'll see you later. Poor Aaron. I'm not trying to be mean to you, I promise. Hope you didn't run into too much trouble out Oh there. my gosh, my dude, do I have stories to tell you. I better get going. Make sure to stay in touch. I wonder what people look like, just like staring off into space now. These guys are just like, I mean, they're obviously staring at holograms, but it kind of, it's just kind of funny. Zoe, though. Zoe. Thought I heard you come in. I should be able to talk to her. Dang it. No. I better head out. I wish you well. I thought I could come back and talk to her about the thing, Majiggy. About her quest to save Plainsong. Um... Oh, legit, though, Aaron is, like, my personal strike table? That's cool. That's cool. I bet you he's actually good at it. Um... Where's everybody else? Are people sleeping in there? Oh, my gosh. She's got, like, a mop and rugs for the bathroom and flowers. Oh, my gosh. It's disgusting, but she's doing her best. Okay. I do feel kind of bad. Although, to be fair, um, at least the Nora are used to sleeping in cramped conditions. Or, you know, like, uh, with others around. At least they were in the Nora village, it seemed like. Maybe that's just a kid thing, though. Like a, you're not a full warrior yet thing. You look like you've been busy. As do you. He's like, your armor. I'm like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> I better head out. Be vigilant out there. I do wish I could bring friends with me. 
Oh, where's the basement? Where's my twin? She's in the basement. This is my room. Oh, it's so nice. Is this new? No. I feel like there's more plants. Maybe there aren't, but it's very nice. Oh. Twin is probably just, you know, siphoning off data to give to the baddies. Oh, good. Door is locked until Gaia can restore access. I hope she isn't. I hope I'm being just overly paranoid. Hello. That's so weird. Hey. Me again. Was there something else? No. Nope. That's enough for now. Good. We're both so awkward for different reasons. Alright, I guess I have to talk to Gaia before it actually triggers it as completed. Wait, that's the exit. Ugh. Gaia, ugh. I don't think there's anything in there I can do. Where's Gaia? I don't know where she is. I am so lost. Haha. <laughs> Okay, up the stairs. She doesn't have a glowy th symbol over her door. Mom, I'm home. I have a drone for you, too. Welcome back, Aloy. Thank you. I see you have recovered Poseidon. I have, but first let's do this. Okay. Data modules in. Error. Drone offline. Oh, hang on. Gonna do it. Oh, An excellent choice. Oh, it is lovely. I love it. Water power. Aloy, can you come downstairs? Beta has something you need to yep. hear. Okay. I'll be right down. Aloy, I have managed to Ooh. unlock additional rooms within the facility. Got it. Anybody else? Hi, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. Uh. So. I guess Beta's here to stay. I gave her a focus. Told her to talk to you to see if she can help. She's... Not what I expected. What were you expecting? I don't know. Someone more helpful, I guess. And... Less pessimistic. It is true she overestimated our progress. However... It is also worth noting that her confidence in your abilities emboldened her to escape the Zeniths. I guess so. Give her time. She may yet come around. I'm gonna click all the exclamation point things. How's Katalo doing? I have detected that the loss of his arm still deeply pains him. In an effort to remedy this, I have discussed a potential solution Ooh, with him. Ooh, prosthetic! I believe he will want to fill you in on the details. A solution? I'll check in with him when I can, then. Any more? How are things around here? Zoe has been studying the morphology of her land gods in an effort to understand their sickness. Without the abilities of Hephaestus, I am unfortunately unable to correct their programming. However, due to Zoe's perseverance, we may have a workaround. Yeah, she filled me in. Sounds promising. 
Varl and Zoe seem to like spending time together. Indeed. While studying old world data, Zoe discovered references to a dietary lifestyle known as vegetarianism. No, no. She appreciated the similarities with Utaru practices and encouraged Varl to try out this He's lifestyle. He's a hunter! And how did that go? I believe they have agreed to disagree. <laughs> you sometimes you just gotta, you know? You take your walk, you take your path, and I'll take mine. <laughs> we can walk next to each other, but <laughs> slightly off kilter. How's Aaron handling things? He is becoming increasingly accustomed to use of the focus. After an initial incident. What did he do? What did he do? <laughs> He unfortunately crushed his first focus as he attempted to affix it to his temple. Oh. Amongst a number <laughs> of Osaram curses, I believe he also blamed the focus for being dainty. He has given repeated assurances that it will not happen again. Well, good thing we have a lot of extras, I guess. So there's a few people here now, and they're learning all about you. The ancient world, almost like what was supposed to happen before Apollo was purged. Yes. While the loss of the Apollo database was catastrophic, there is still much that can be gleaned from the data you have uncovered. For instance, Varl has been reviewing the last recorded entries from those who perished during the Pharaoh plague. No. Oh. Hearing their hopes and fears made him quite sorry. Yeah, same, bro. Anything I should be worried about? I do not believe so. I have elected not to intervene, to allow him to process this on his own terms. Okay. So this facility, the Regional Control Center, it was meant to oversee the terraforming system? For the local region, yes. Had humans received their education from the Apollo database, they would have then been guided here to assume operation. As that never happened, this place remained vacant. Until Minerva decided to settle here. So I guess this room was meant to keep an eye on conditions outside? Yes. From here, the facility's operators would have been able to observe weather and oh. machine activity in real time. When, it was, when they were unable to go out, it maybe. It may be possible to restore more of this room's functionality, should you find and reconnect additional camera feeds. I'll keep a look out. I can't believe those cameras are still working. So the Hades Proving Lab, where I found the Gaia Colonel. It used to be a feral research facility? Yes. Prior to appropriation by Zero Dawn, the facility was used to engineer and test advanced computer viruses. Oh boy. It appears to have been one of many research initiatives by Pharaoh Automated Solutions. I guess it wasn't enough to build automated killing machines. He wanted viruses to infect them with too. What a dick. So a while back, before the battle at Meridian, oh yeah, I went into Banuk territory. Yeah, I remember that. I discovered another AI there, <gasps> one not related to Zero Dawn. Oh, cool. Science. Oh, cool. It was created to oversee operations for a volcanic stabilization project, and it spent the last thousand years in isolation. I'm guessing you didn't know about it. No. From the data on your focus. It seems that Cyan was cut off from the outside world. Intentionally. An effort by its creators to protect it from the Pharaoh Plague. Any chance it could help us now? I have already attempted contact, with no success. Given its previous experience with accepting an outside network request, I imagine it is unwilling to do so again. Right. Because last time Hephaestus and Slate Well, that wasn't a request. That was well, a bully. That's too bad. I think the two of you would have had a lot to talk about. The processor Ether was installed on was part of an ancient war museum, a memorial to something called the Hot Zone Crisis. Do you know anything about it? My knowledge of historical events was unfortunately lost with the Apollo database. However, 
climate data indicates a peak in regional temperatures in the 2030s. Such conditions would see extreme prolonged droughts, an increase in dust storms, and a loss of habitable landmass. But they wouldn't have built a museum in the middle of a wasteland. So I guess things got better eventually. Yes. Data suggests that temperatures return to average levels in the clawback era of the 2040s. Yeah, when they were actively trying to, like, fix, like, environmental conditions. Um, she has to have some. Like, the thing, and this is the thing, is, like, I don't think, she hasn't put all of her, like, programming into Hephaestus. She hasn't put all of her water, she has, I would think she would have some of everything. Just not a bunch of everything. Not the vast majority of everything, so. She obviously, like, remembers Elizabeth and stuff. There was an ancient tank embedded in the bulwark, buried under a bunch of boulders. Any idea how it got there? During the Pharaoh Plague, the U.S. military resumed the use of human combatants, as automated machinery was unreliable. It is possible the vehicle was part of a pre-automated war fleet. So they fought against the Pharaoh machines in the valley, until the mountain was blasted apart and buried them. When I dove down into Vegas, oh. I found data about the man who built the dome over the city. Stanley This Chen. is cool stuff. It turns out he was a member of Far Zenith. But if he loved Vegas so much, why did he abandon it? Why not try to save it? Thank you! The Zeniths at their core have proven to be exceptional survivalists. Faced with overwhelming odds of extinction, they chose to flee. Even still, what he achieved... Water to the wasteland, an entire city brought back to life. A thousand years later, the whole place was still on standby, just waiting for someone to come along and wake it up. This is cool stuff. You get a little more in-depth on some of the things we found. When we were at the facility where we found Beta, there were records that said Far Zenith were researching embryogenesis. I know they traded their ectogenic chambers to Zero Dawn, but... Why were they researching it in the first place? At this point, we can only speculate. Perhaps at one time they meant the Odyssey to be a colony ship, necessitating such technology. As their goals evolved over time, so did their areas of research. So they got more selfish as the risks of staying on Earth kept rising. Heck yeah, don't... Don't let them... Have I done these? I don't know. They're white. Gaia? What was Elizabeth like? Her presence is interwoven with my memories. The moment I came online, she was there. We exchanged greetings, <gasps> names, then set to our task. It was the first of many conversations. I enjoyed being in her company, listening to her stories. She was my creator, my guide. Your friend? Yes. When I reviewed the data on your focus, I was saddened to learn of her fate. Though I am glad she made it home. I deeply wish she did not have to be alone. She was okay with that. She gave all of herself. The only one who could. Thanks, Gaia. It's odd to remember that Gaia is not a person, <laughs> right? She's an AI, but she's so sentient that she does at least have the approximation of feelings. So, Project Zero Dawn. The greatest minds in the world, all working to build the terraforming system while the Pharaoh Plague devoured the planet. What was it like? Personnel worked in rotations at all hours of the day. Resources and technology were secured from across the world. Within a month of the project's conception, I was launched and began my education. Elizabeth encouraged me to spend time with the rest of the Zero Dawn staff. She said it was important to experience many personalities and perspectives 
to aid in my emotional development. What were they like? Scared. Hopeful. Determined. They were hurtling toward technological achievements on a scale never before attempted. I owe everything to their dedication. It's cool stuff. Uh, sure. Oh, geez. Okay, let's maybe just do, um, Aether and Poseidon. You mentioned that the superstorms have subsided. Is that Aether at work? <gasps> yes. Thanks to Aether's capabilities, weather patterns in the local region should mostly stabilize for the time being. That'll be a relief for the Tanakh. One of their villages is still recovering after a mudslide caused the whole place to flood. I will continue to stabilize the atmosphere for as long as I can. More Aether? Why did Aether take up residence in an ancient war museum? As with the other subordinate functions, Aether needed to install itself on a processor with adequate storage and power. The one in the museum appears to have been sufficient, given that the holographic displays were still active. So Aether was assured it could stay for as long as it needed to. Correct. Though it is curious that it chose a place surrounded with the ancient ruins of aircraft. Yep. Maybe it also felt at home there. At least an approximation of home. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. Oh, good! According to my data, however, oh, yeah. it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. Hey. <laughs> It's never ending. <laughs> so Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? Yeah. I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. Well, what the hey, hey. We might as well just do all these and make it an episode. What can you tell me about Demeter? Demeter sows, fertilizes, and tends to plant life. So once I bring it back, all the blight out there will start to get better. While permanent restoration requires the abilities of Hephaestus, I may be able to improve conditions in the region for a while. That's reason. However, a word of warning. Like Aether and Poseidon, Demeter's response to my query was highly irregular. Alone and frightened, it may have taken measures to assure its security. Okay, I'll keep my guard up. Yeah, I'm not expecting to just walk in, waltz in and grab it and leave. Um, when she says region, does she mean like the Tanakh area, or does that go over into like the Karja and the Nora? I feel like it just means this region, like where we are, where our map is. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the earth with a variety of animals. We may have done this already, I apologize. Luthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066. By order of Ted Pharaoh. Who shouldn't have had that authority. Pharaoh, huh? I really hate that guy. I really hate that guy. He appears to have been pathologically narcissistic, impulsive, and unstable. 
All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Far Zenith, Attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I might have to grab the those. The shot recovering them is by taking over the Zenith base. But we'll need Hephaestus and a bunch of combat machines to do that. There's probably right. something Gaia needs to do that will require those three at the end. Now I'm like, mm, okay, I see. Like, we'll get Hephaestus. And then we'll storm the base. And we'll get the three other things so that she has just enough of the heuristic density to be able to actually bring all the craziness, like weather anomaly stuff under control. So once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes, and to program their behavioral routines or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines, attack the Zeniths and take them out. I don't think she can. It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth, human life above all. So yes, once I have been empowered oh, by okay. the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. One that kills humans. Given the nature of the far zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have okay. misgivings about using such technology to kill. I hope so. No matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. She's like, yes, I know. I'm quite pleased. <laughs> so from what Beta told me, I guess we can assume the Zenith's technology is powerful in all sorts of ways, right? Yes. As your encounters with them amply demonstrate, they appear to make extensive use of robotic servitors. Further, they seem to be equipped with some kind of protective energy field that shields them from harm. They seemed indestructible, but that weapon the rebels used stripped their shield somehow. Throughout history, every defensive technology has eventually been defeated by an offensive counterpart. <laughs> While we lack the anti-shielding weapon, were I to absorb Hephaestus and utilize it to create a large force of combat machines, no shielding could withstand such an assault indefinitely. So there's hope. A, a brutal, Always. blunt, hammer and nail approach. Uh, it's okay, I keep forgetting there's like, uh, it's not just the rebels, it's not just Farzina, it's not just Aloy. There's that other guy out there whose name escapes me, but who I trusted... And then he betrayed me, <laughs> sort of, kind of, I don't know. He's a dick anyway, he's mean to me. He's like, you're so, you're barely smart enough for me to talk to, is essentially condescending. What is his name? He killed Hades, tortured it. It's right there on the tip of my tongue, I can't remember. The extinction signal He's out there like though, Hades. doing stuff. It made every subordinate function self-aware. Why? I have wondered this myself. So far as I can tell, Hades was the sole target, and the partial sentience imparted to other subordinate functions was incidental. A signal that precise would require thorough knowledge of the system. How could the Zeniths know that? From the records on your focus, it appears Far Zenith had mm -hmm. an informant during the development of Zero Dawn. Hank Shaw. He was supposed to steal a copy of the system for Far Zenith, but Elizabeth and Travis Tate caught him first. Yes. It is likely Far Zenith acquired knowledge on the system's design through him, despite his failure. So the Zeniths are the same people who left Earth. Physically immortal. How'd they figure it out? From what we know of Far Zenith, it is plausible that prominent geneticists and engineers were offered a place aboard the Odyssey in exchange for their expertise. Given enough time, technology, and resources, any challenge can be overcome. I don't think death can be overcome. Minerva eventually generated the deactivation codes for the Pharaoh. I don't think that's a 
Exactly. But she, she had like a hundred years or something, and these people wouldn't didn't have that time. You know what I mean? Like, if these are the same people who left Earth, then they figured it out in like ten years or twenty years how to be immortal. I don't think, I don't think he works like that. The Zenas. Gerard, Eric, Tilda, Verbena. Beta said they were some of the most powerful people on Earth. Do you know anything about them? Unfortunately, no. My personal database is limited to those who worked on Zero Dawn. Additionally, it appears Far Zenith was quite secret. It would be interesting to know who they were. Only one, Oswald Dalgard, was ever publicly known. Right. He was the spokesperson. Back at the he got left facility. behind. What we can conclude from your and Beta's experiences is that the Zeniths are ruthless in pursuit of their goal. To protect life on Earth, they must be stopped. Yeah, because they've warped. Oh, yeah. I have a blanket on. Beta believes the Zeniths want to use the terraforming system to wipe out life on Earth. Start over. So they can build it how they want. <sighs> Further supporting our hypothesis. But why? Given their technology, they could wipe out the tribes of the world by easier means. And if they're the same people who left Earth a thousand years ago, wouldn't they want the biosphere to be as it was? It is likely they adjusted to different planetary conditions in their colony on Sirius. They may be trying to recreate that environment here. Turning Earth into a new Sirius. Their own personal playground. After they ruined the last one, and the one before that, being original Earth. Oh, no way, no how. At least in this game, I feel like I can do something against the greater powers that be that are trying to destroy the world with only thoughts for their own greed, you know? It's, it's nice. It's nice to have that facade in a video game. <laughs> I'll be on my way. I wish you safe travels. Thank you. I didn't realize we had so much to talk about. Hell, whoa, look at all these points I'm getting. Holy moly. Let's use them. I did... What the feller? Stamina limit. Wasn't the triple notch. There's no damage it can stagger or knock down machines. Interesting. Oh. Oh, like an actual shotgun burst. At long range. Oh. Okay, I put a lot of points into that one, so maybe we'll get some... Take less damage while mounted. Move faster while using a heavy weapon. Heck yeah, give me that. Move faster. Deal more damage while on a mount. Not gonna worry about that. Overridden machines have more health. What is this? Oh yeah. Let's put a little bit into potions maybe. Medicinal berries provide more healing and heal you faster. Okay. I'm done with that. Alright, we're doing really well. Look at all this. Look at all this stuff. Watch, I, I get enough points eventually to be able to, like, even do the warrior thing, warrior tree, but I don't actually do it. In Horizon for Zero Dawn, you could, you could get all those skills. I ended up having extra points in the end that I just didn't, couldn't do anything with, but it was fine, you know? Um... I'm going to call this one here. What a reasonably timed episode full of information. <laughs> this was nice. Gaia's voice is very soothing, too. 
Um, but thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I, I freaking enjoy lore dumps, but I'll try to keep on top of it more. I could have sworn I would have clicked all the options before. Maybe I did. And the game just gives you a bunch of freaking things to say. Although, to be fair, some of it was stuff that I encountered in the wilderness, and I haven't come back since the last, since the last kernel. So, there was a lot to catch up on. So, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it on this cozy night. At least it's a cozy night for me. So, really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Coledo, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron, who is the super bestest, and you're super great, and thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. So, thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.